Welcome back to another episode of the unofficial Squarespace Entrepreneur Podcast. My name is Omari Harabin. I'm your host, the founder of sqsp-themes.com. And today I've got Jared Gold, uh, the founder of Website by Tonight. And I've known Jared for a few years. um, And I think what he's done with Website by Tonight, his process, how he's refined it and continues to refine it um, is something that I wanted to bring him on and talk more about. So without any further ado, I'm going to let Jared go ahead and introduce himself and Website by Tonight. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on the show, Roz. Uh, so yeah, Website by Tonight is the easiest way to get a simple and professional website done uh, quickly and cost effectively. So we work both with individual clients, such as independent consultants or solo entrepreneurs or new businesses, um, as well as for agencies, uh, whether in a contracting capacity or actually a white label capacity. And so the way it works is clients just fill out our project brief and content doc, which we approve, uh, match them to one of our designers, and they'll actually build and launch the website in real time over screen share. So they see everything the designer is doing, um, they can say, oh, you know, change this font. What about this over here, et cetera, and see the designer do it uh, right in front of their eyes. Um, so websites, you know, getting a website done over screen sharing saves that uh, months of email back and forth that anyone who's ever experienced a website, uh, building a website, uh, knows that's pretty much the norm. And uh, so we'll launch on their domain, give them some basic maintenance training uh, if they want, and they're on their way, and it's eight ninety nine or twelve ninety nine flat. Nice. Wow. So um, there's a couple of things that I want to unpack with that. Sure. The, f- the first is how did you arrive at this particular model? Was it something you were already privy to or did you kind of just stumble on it along the way? Yeah. Um, let's see here. So I had been doing custom Squarespace websites for a while. Um, and by the way, with Website by Tonight, all of our websites are built on the Squarespace platform. Uh, Roz, I know you're obviously a big fan. Um, so I've been doing custom Squarespace websites for a while, just as a, a one man shop, uh, and, and occasionally bringing in other, uh, people with different capabilities as needed. Um, and while I enjoyed building the websites myself, ultimately, I think I considered myself more of a business person than a designer. And mm-hmm. so creating the websites just got pretty taxing for me because, uh, I'm just not naturally a designer. I'd say I was proud of the work I did, but, um, yeah. I was looking it's not like me. <laughs> right, right. And so I was uh I was thinking I'm like, you know, how can I leverage myself a little better? You know, I know I need something different. And then uh at one point, uh I guess about 3 years ago, a friend came to me and he's a uh solo practitioner, he's a nutritionist. And uh he's like, "Jared, you do websites? I need a website." And at first thought, I'm like, "Oh god, like <laughs> uh you know, th- I don't want to work on like a a simple website, right? I want something more challenging." Uh, yeah. But I didn't want to tell this guy no, so I, I'm just like, you know what, uh, here's a here's some questions to complete just via Google Doc. Uh, just answer the questions, and I'll come over and we'll do it together, right? I wasn't even going to charge him, um, yeah. and, I, and I didn't charge him. And anyway, we I, I went over to his place. Uh, we did it in a few hours. Uh, I thought nothing of it. I thought it was really easy um, because, you know, I'd been doing more custom Squarespace sites for a while, but he was, like, totally overjoyed. Right. It, just after yeah. working with him for a few hours. And so I realized I'm like, hmm, that's that's interesting. Maybe I could actually charge for this thing just as a sort of uh, extra income stream occasionally uh, as I get these smaller leads. Because I've been getting smaller leads for a while. These independent consultants, solo entrepreneurs, people that need like a really, really simple, professional kind of brochure website um, that doesn't involve too much customization. They don't need too much handholding. They have you know, maybe a budget of $1,500 or $1,000, something in that range. Yeah. Um, and they don't want the usual, you know, uh, consultative kind of process. And so, yeah, I started, uh, I would continue to get some of those leads coming in and I would reply to them and say, hey, listen, I don't think you're a usual fit for uh, the more custom Squarespace sites, but I'm trying out this process. Uh, I think it'd be a good fit for someone like you. What do you think? And they instantly yeah. were like, yes. I'm ready to buy right now. <laughs> so, nice. um, yeah, I just kind of went from there. And then I realized at some point that I'm much more excited about 
uh, growing a business that doesn't directly scale, that can scale uh, well beyond me. It doesn't scale directly just with my, uh, in proportion to my time. So I can have more leverage. So that's really how web, uh, website by tonight, uh, kind of took off there and just adopting this sort of productized service mindset from, uh, people like Brian Castle, uh, has been, has been really valuable. And that's, that's how I got the business to where it is now. Nice, man. So give me a little insight into like some of the biggest challenges you faced, whether just freelancing or, um, you know, evolving into where you are now. Hmm. Let's see. I would say I wasted a ton of time going to like in-person networking events, Mm. uh, like a ton of time. And, you know, maybe some people have better luck with them, but I think they're very rarely, and maybe it's just where I am in Washington, DC. Maybe they're less good here than somewhere like New York. But yeah, I just I wasted so much time with them. I met like really wonderful people, but like the ROI was just like non existent. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I know you're good with the follow up too, so I could only imagine. Exactly. Yeah. Like net, <laughs> like I'm a really good networker. And so I'm like, man, I wasted so much time networking. Um I think I wasted a lot of time early on. Um trying to find the right software tools without necessarily refining my process and then finding the right tool. Mm. Uh, I took a while to find a, a niche. So uh, instead of, and I, this is a, a standard rookie mistake when everyone gets started out is uh, you say, Oh yeah, I do website design. Well, what the hell does that mean? Right. As yeah. opposed to, you know, I do website, uh, website design for, uh, B2B professional services businesses who need a simple pro, uh, professional brochure website somewhere in the 3K to 6K range, right? Like that's a lot yeah. more clear, for example. So those were some, the, those were some early mistakes. Um, and, then, and then I would say just adopting some general productivity practices uh, over the years has like really amplified me. So for example, I don't take calls before 11 a.m. Uh, my time. Uh, because the mornings are, I found I'm most productive. So I don't take calls before then. Uh, I don't take out of the blue calls. So someone has to use like my Calendly link to schedule a call. But when they do, you know, I'm able to prepare and I'm able to best help them, whatever that looks like. So yeah. it really does everyone a favor. It allows me to keep my sanity uh, while helping them as much as possible. And yeah, just general productivity tips like that have have really uh, impacted me. And then also, you know, trying to, trying to be less obsessive over email so I can spend time on higher value things. But, uh, you know, that's still a daily challenge. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm, 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 I'm finding that lately I'm, I don't know if I'm enjoying email more, (laughs) but, um, it's, it's, yeah, my support inbox is a different story. It always scares me, (laughs) (laughs) but, but my regular inbox, it's, it's always kind of like, I'm anticipating like gems to, <laughs> to <laughs> pop up in my inbox. Um, who, who did you learn from along the way? Like who were some of your, your, your mentors, so to speak? Oh gosh. Uh, I would say some of the best, I'm trying to think of some of the best business books I've read. I wish I had a list. Um, I would say books like built to sell and the E-Myth mm. revisited. Are you familiar with them? I'm I'm familiar with the E-Myth, but, and I've heard about Built to Sell, but I've never read it. Yeah, so really the same kind of books. Uh, if you've yeah. read one, it probably counts as reading the other. Uh, but they're both allegories about building, becoming a real business owner and entrepreneur um, and yeah. building something that scales beyond you. Uh, I think those are really helpful. I think a good free ebook online that especially freelancers need to read is, uh, it was just a free PDF by FreshBooks called Breaking the Time Barrier. Okay. Uh, and that one comes to mind because uh, I think so many freelancers are so worried about hourly rates and kind of living in this state of paranoia and fear as opposed to just switching to some sort of value-based pricing. You know, mm. instead of saying, hey, I work for $60 an hour, just like scope out the project and, and name a price and commit to it, you know, and you can renegotiate right. it if, if you were way off. Uh, but I think... Uh, that was a great free ebook. Uh, definitely books I'd say were like my main mentors. I mean, there's a lot of great podcasts out there, uh, but it kind of gets overwhelming. And so just general entrepreneurial and, and business podcasts have been pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, I would say those business books 
uh, especially like the E-Myth. Uh, those are really, really hard. Those are timeless and really hard to beat and uh, really set an awesome vision. And then uh, I would say I really enjoyed Brian Castle's productized course uh, okay. combined with, I mean, that was a great course, but then he matched, uh, he matches people every six, six weeks or so into a mastermind uh, group, so to speak, of yeah. uh, four people total. And my mastermind group, I don't know about the other ones, I have no idea, but my mastermind group has been meeting like every Tuesday for an hour or more for like a year and a half straight. <laughs> like oh, we, wow. we basically haven't missed a meeting. I mean, maybe like once uh, during like the holidays, right? Once or twice. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's been immensely valuable. That might be the most valuable thing uh, in terms of, uh, you know, continuing along with this because entrepreneurship is hard and it can be depressing and exhausting yeah. and lonesome and lonesome. And, you know, entrepreneurs are not wired like everyone else. Uh, so we're a special breed and, uh, it's, it's good to have like-minded people on a challenging journey. So what, what about on the, on the, cause I, I find that the entrepreneurial journey, um, is very much like, uh, there's a lot of parallels with like the self-development world, uh, or personal development, whatever you call it. But, um, like it, it forces you to have to work on yourself in a, in a way that I think, uh, you don't necessarily have to as a, perhaps, a, a you know, an employee style contributor, um, like give me a little insight into like your, your own personal development journey. And, um, maybe you can touch on purpose cards. Cause I, I think, um, there's some purpose with purpose cards. <laughs> Appreciate it. Oh uh, yeah. These are Roz. I should have known to, uh, be on my game with these deep questions here. <laughs> so I think, I, I think that's a, a great, uh, parallel you made in terms of when you're an entrepreneur or taking the entrepreneurial path. Uh, you kind of realize that you have to, in order to build a business, you actually have to most likely evolve yourself, right? Like maybe some people are born prodigies. I was not born a prodigy. Uh, <laughs> I, I am not yet a super, super master either. I have a long way to go. But I, I sort of, I'd say the the first book that really got me down the rabbit hole of everything, uh, and I'm sure a lot of others on the show can relate, perhaps yourself, is uh, The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. Mm. And I don't know why I listened to that. I think I needed a, a lengthy audiobook, uh, or, or just like a normal audiobook for my lengthy commute to my very first job out of college, which I hated. And I had just somehow heard the title somewhere, right? Or, or perhaps I opened up Audible and I just saw it was one of the best sellers. And mm -hmm. I'm like, four hour work week. Well, I hate my <laughs> job. So that sounds really great. Yep. Um, and I was just listening to it. And man, like, it got me so fired up. Right. Like, and, and some of the criticism of the book is valid. Like it can be a little cheesy, a little off putting at times. Um, but I think just like some of the key messages, like really hit home with me. They were, they were like earth shattering, groundbreaking, changed me forever once I heard wow. them. And so that kind of got me that, um, started the itch of like, oh, I want to write because I've always enjoyed writing. I want to write about yeah how my whole life has been a lie. <laughs> you know, you go, you work hard in high school to get into college to then get a good job. And then that's success. There you yeah. go. And yeah. I don't know about you, but, uh, that was not the case for me. So, yeah. um, it kind of went down the rabbit hole and then you'd see naturally other books like the four hour work week, whether it's around lifestyle design, whether it's around personal growth and development, whether it's on the subject of, uh, mindfulness or leadership related books. And so just, uh, I would say like, I, I mean, I always say that it, if I could have done it all over, it's easy for me to say this now because I, yeah. I, I think I, I think it makes sense, but I don't know with, you know, butterfly effect and chain of events, if, if it would have turned out uh, like it did now, but I, I would say I would totally forego college and instead <laughs> like apprentice under a successful entrepreneur and just yeah. like read a shit ton of books. Uh, yeah. because I learned so much from all the books that I've read infinitely more than I ever learned in school. And I was actually excited to learn about it. So I was absorbing the material, even if I didn't conscious, even if I can't consciously like remember it on cue, I mm -hmm. know it's like buried in my subconscious somewhere. Right. And it'll, yeah. and it just like, you know, once the seed is planted, it just kind of grows on its own over time. And you realize that a lot of that knowledge 
uh, is, is already permeating in your head to be used later. So yeah. that, that really got me started. Uh, and I've been on this path now for like, uh, six or seven years, about seven years at this point. And oh, oh, yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> I decided I was just sitting alone in a, a coffee shop one day with, with my notebook, just like free writing, free thinking. And that's some of the best time, uh, I, I spend like, that's never a bad investment of time. Right. Mm-hmm. For me, that's my happy place. It's like mm-hmm. nice journal, nice pen. Don't, don't journal on like a crappy journal or a crappy pen, like invest in, <laughs> in good ones and a nice cup of coffee and no phone or anything. And I'm like, you know, I'd love a, a, a tool where I could just like automatically be reminded of my goals and like what I'm even doing this all for, right. Mm-hmm. To, to keep me going throughout the day. And so I sketched out, uh, I was thinking like a personal clarity dashboard and it would be a new tab Chrome extension. Um, because you know, I wanted it to appear automatically where I already am. I don't want to have to consciously yep. think about checking it. So a new tab Chrome extension made a lot of sense. And so I wireframe that out and, uh, paid, a like a UX designer to mock it up for like 150 bucks. I, f- I found this person on dribble and then, uh, just found a freelance front end developer that I thought did good work. I think I found him on dribble as well and looked through his stuff. And yeah, I, bo- I bootstrapped this Chrome extension called purpose tab. Uh, just if you go to purpose tab.com, it'll redirect you to the Chrome web store and didn't really get any marketing going for it, but it's got about, uh, just under 1400 users and 49 five-star reviews. And so pretty, pretty awesome feedback thus far. And I realized that, okay, well, I'm not going to make any money on this anytime soon. I sunk a lot of money into it <laughs> and, and I'm also not always at my computer. So, uh, what would be something that is super minimalist that would just help me make every day a success and I don't have to be yeah. at my computer. And so that's where I just, again, sketched out the idea for purpose cards. Like it just came to me and purpose cards are daily micro journaling cards that are, um, a little bit smaller than a business card, uh, a little bit shorter, uh, but they fit in your wallet and you can take them actually, well, they will be the size of a business card, just this early prototype. They're a little bit shorter, but they will end up mm-hmm. being the size of business card. So it's the size of a business card that can fit in your wallet, take with you anywhere. And you do the sun side in the morning, taking maybe 60 to 90 seconds to do that. Uh, you can take it with you throughout the day. Uh, and then at the, uh, end of the day, you fill out the moon side, uh, just reflecting on the day a little bit, maybe what you could do better tomorrow and then you can store it back in the box and so it's just a way to set yourself up for success early on in the day and keep track of it uh you know pull it out of your wallet in between a commute or when you have some downtime just to check in and and see how that day was going based on how you initially were hoping uh was hoping it would go and then uh yeah and so just building this catalog uh kind of sort of uh daily guided journaling for the rest of us i feel like a lot of guided journaling notebooks, the aesthetic isn't for me, uh, or it's too type A and involved and it's hard to commit to. And so this is like super minimalist. Anyone commit to this and it could be a really valuable tool for people. So, uh, getting the version 1.1 prototype now and should start the Kickstarter campaign, uh, by the end of March. So we'll see how that goes. So that's purpose cards. Wow. So What's the opposite of a type A person, just as a side? <laughs> I would say... <laughs> is it like type D? Is there like a type for it? Or is it just, we just know type A's and then everyone, it's just everyone else. Type wow, A's and then you everyone. know, you might have to coin a phrase for that. I feel like that's a blog post coming from you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we. I don't know if there is a name for it, but I would say, I think we all know what a type A person is like. So the opposite would be someone that um, is apathetic or indifferent. And mm. is go with the flow in a bad way. Like they don't, mm, okay. they don't show initiative. Uh, they, they don't have a sense of urgency. Uh, they might not have clear goals or motivations. They're just kind of uh, living uh, moment to moment, maybe, maybe unhappy or like, just like I, I think of indifference, like just a general state of indifference when I would say mm-hmm. opposite of type A. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you nailed it. Um, for, okay. A couple of things. One talking to you now, I'm like, Oh, Jared's, Jared's like an analog guy in the digital world, right? (laughs) Like you got, it sounds like you got very strong analog sensibilities. 
You like to be able to like touch and feel quality stuff. <laughs> um, and while still being able to like, you know, flex inside of this digital domain that we, we, you know, co-experience. Um, do you have your own business cards period? Like I find that when I meet people, especially older people, they always ask me for a business card and I never have anything to give them. Do you, are you a business card person or not? Nah? That is funny. Uh, <laughs> I actually need to get business cards for website by tonight. I have old business cards from my previous one man web shop. Yeah. Um, I feel like because I don't really go to networking events, I think there's like way better events in places like New York, uh, and like LA and SF as opposed to DC. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why that is. I think just those cities are just, there's so much epic stuff going on, but I, I don't really carry business cards around with me and I don't really get that opportunity to, to hand them out much, but I yeah. think business cards are still, I still think they're like a reasonable investment. Like they're not that much money. Just go on moo.com and order a nice one you're proud of. Yeah. And yeah, just like have it. I mean, it, it's not like they make a big difference, but it's, uh, you know, and usually I'm the one who asks for that person's contact info and I'll personally follow up. So the business card is moot because uh, mm-hmm. I'm following up with that person anyway. But I, I think it's nice to have business cards personally, just like yeah. a small box of them. Yeah, I mean, so I, I've been thinking, I mean, I've had this thought for a long time, but um, I'm like, well, what if what if you had a deck of business cards and of course on one side you've got your uh, relevant contact information, but on the other side there's something um, like thoughtful that's different on each card. Mm. And so getting the card uh, feels more like, you know, like you're receiving like a fortune of some kind. (laughs) Um, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Or like a Cohen or something. I don't know how to pronounce it, but K O A N the, uh, you know, the, 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 the parables. Oh, wow. That is so funny. You say that someone said that word the other day and they didn't pronounce it well. (laughs) Um, so I thought they said go on, Uh, not like K O A N. Yeah. And those are like the Zen parables that don't really have an yeah, answer, right? Zen parables. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, and I'm like, exactly. Oh, that's so funny you mentioned that. I can sleep so much easier at night knowing I can research <laughs> that. I, I, really, I really like that idea. Like I could see a lot of people being into that. It's not cookie cutter. It's unique. It's memorable. And it's a better representation maybe of, of who you are if they have these like interesting phrases that represent y- your kind of mindset or ideology. Yeah, you know, it gives you something to think about. And then the next time they see you, they might ask for your business card again. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're definitely going to be top of mind, right? Like they have a, let's say they have a bunch of business cards. Well, yours is by far the most interesting. So yeah. have I convinced you to get into the card business now? <laughs> you have, you have. I'm like cone cards. I Googled it and I'm like, hmm, um, this doesn't exist. Uh, and it sounds, it, it feels like, uh, it feels like something that should already exist if it doesn't already. You know, so, that, that's, anyway. that's been a, like a driving mindset for me is uh, this should exist. Like kind of mm-hmm. slightly outraged that it, not outraged, but like slightly annoyed that it doesn't. Like this seems, yeah. this seems trivial. This should exist. Slash what would uh, scratch your own itch? Like what would you like to use yourself? And it seems like uh, this idea of yours fits both of those uh, yeah. categories. So. If you can make it happen, uh, I'll order them. I think it yeah, sounds I'll, great. I'll, I'll do. A, I'll print up a couple. Nice. See what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Um, so there's a couple of things I, I, I wanted to touch on too. So um, I know you have a history in poker, and that's something that that I haven't spoken with you about, but <laughs> I, I heard it on one of your many podcasts, and <laughs> I thought. I thought it would be interesting to to learn because I've never really been a poker person, but I have a, a real appreciation for just like games, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially ones that require a certain level of strategy or um, uh, a, a mindful approach. And I, I think poker kind of falls under that category. Have you in your poker playing experience been able to like, you know, extrapolate some of those principles to business? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's hilarious. Like, I'm honored that you listen to my other podcasts. <laughs> and, oh, man. and uh, you know, these are these are great questions, man. Definitely. You got to be a responsible prepared. host. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So, 
Um, and, and we can talk offline. Like I'd be happy to give you some, some poker tips, uh, cause I really enjoy teaching it. I would say mm. it's like the one skill it's like probably my strongest skill. Um, it is cause I spent so much time learning the game and, yeah. and, and I want to be clear that when I say poker, I basically just mean Texas Hold'em. Um, okay. I mean, it, now you can apply to, uh, it, it can apply to other types of poker. Certainly, but uh, I think Texas Hold'em is basically the standard at this point, uh, being that it was on TV so much, and and the rules are pretty easy to understand. Uh, but but that me it you know still it it takes a lifetime to master, mm-hmm. and so I would say poker, like I would say it was possibly the most important, or like hmm, I'm trying to think how to say this. Like I don't think of a I can't think of a better way to have set me up for some business success later on. Mm-hmm. other than playing poker when I was younger, right? So I started yeah. playing when I was like 13 and or, or like 12 with friends when the uh, mm-hmm. poker playing boom happened, uh, when Chris Moneymaker won the World Series Poker in 2013. And he's just like an everyman accountant. And so that's when ESPN, it kind of caught fire, right? You see this everyday person winning a ton of money and mm-hmm. it was broadcast on ESPN. And everyone's like, wow, poker is an interesting game. And so my friends and I in high school would play every day after school. We were all addicted. Uh, I was terrible. I lost a ton of money uh, in person to them and and online when I started. Uh, When I met this kid in my Spanish class who was a year older, and he must have been 13 at the time, and he was playing 510 No Limit online, which is a Mm -hmm. $1,000 buying game, and he was playing multiple tables at once. So. Wow. You know, to play that level of game, you need a bankroll of at least fifty thousand dollars. And his parents like weren't rich, so he or he he must have built a bankroll of at least fifty thousand dollars himself by the age of thirteen, which is just wow. like insane, right? So, yeah. um, and he's still a friend today. Uh, and so I don't know why he put up with all my like idiotic twelve-year-old questions about poker <laughs> and like because I, I used to be terrible, but um, he w- he was like my poker coach and mentor. And eventually I became really good at the game by talking with him, reading books, reviewing hands in, in poker forums. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think poker, there's a few really key concepts that, that really stick with me in poker. Uh, I'd say one of the first ones is just following your intuition and your gut. So poker is a lot of logic, but there's Mm -hmm. also just, uh, just honing your intuition is such a valuable skill uh, to, to take you through the rest of life, especially in business. You know, if you have mm-hmm. a gut feeling that, Hey, this person sounds good on paper, that they'd be a good client, but they, something just feels off. Like they seem a little psycho or weird or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, just like, just say no, just turn them away. Mm-hmm. Like you'll sleep easier at night. Uh, so developing my intuition, um, also looking for situations where the, the downside is capped, but the upside is unlimited. So mm-hmm. there's a concept in poker called, um, uh, implied odds. And so if you have four car- four cards to a straight or a flush and you need just one more card, right? Mm-hmm. If you're, if you don't have, if let's say you're facing a bet and you have to, that bet is how much money you have to put into the pot to see if mm-hmm. this hand, uh, if you make this hand, right. And, cha- and if you make this hand, that means most likely you have the best hand, right? The straight or the flush beats the other person. Mm-hmm. And assuming that they will, they will pay, your final bet on the, on the end. Right. So that's called implied odds is, Hey, if I put in this amount of, if I put in this amount of money now, how much money could I get later? So thinking Mm -hmm. about in terms of like disproportionately high upside, if things go your favor or uh, things go in your favor. And if they don't, you didn't risk that much anyway. So thinking in terms of that kind of leveraged upside, like unlimited upside mindset, um, and, and making the agreement with yourself that, hey, I'm going to risk this small amount for the potentially big amount. And if I lose, it's not a big deal. Uh, I mm. think that is like one of the most valuable mindsets. And I've been hearing, I feel like I hear that a lot from really successful people is that the downside was capped. Um, and really, it was just basically nothing but, but upside if it happened. And if it didn't, you know, no big deal. <clears throat> yeah. So that's like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar um, with that. And thinking about it, I'm like, okay, so uh, if if the downside is capped, and it, it kind of like shifts this perspective that people have that, 
entrepreneurs take on all this risk, which they do, but when the downside is capped, how much risk is there really? Um, so it's like, uh, it, 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 it's, I guess, a little counterintuitive to what the outside world would see as like what's actually going on, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, it's a lot of people think in terms of, oh, that's risky. What if I lose? Yeah. And you can, you can go through life thinking, what if I lose? Or you can go through life thinking, what if I win? Right. Yep. And so I think it's just a different paradigm shift, you know, in school, it's, it's pound into our heads and I won't go off on a diatribe. Don't worry. I could, but no, I won't. Right. Um, in school, it's pound into our heads of, you know, this is what success looks like. And you're not incentivized to take a risk to get that a right. You have to follow mm -hmm. the rules. And if you follow the rules and the, the frameworks that they lay in front of you, then you'll get an a, right. There's no real incentive to take a risk and there's no need. Mm -hmm. So we're just, most people are not used to taking risks, uh, because they, uh, you know, they, they, they haven't done that in all those years of schooling. So yeah. it's definitely sort of a rewiring of your brain. Um, and then there's two other principles really quickly that I think were super valuable with poker. Uh, next would be putting yourself in a position to get lucky. So it, it kind of ties into the implied odds point I made earlier, but mm -hmm. um, I, I think you know, luck is a great thing, but you can maximize your chances of receiving it, being on the receiving end, right? So if you're hiding behind a computer, uh, hiding in your room, hoping business comes to you, that's unlikely. But where are, again, I guess those upside possibilities, like where could you put yourself to where you could be in a position to, to get lucky and, and mm -hmm. receive success that way? And then, and then lastly would be try not to be results oriented. So for example, if you go all in with the best hand in Texas hold and pocket aces and you get called by seven, two offsuit, the worst hand in poker, statistically seven, two offsuit still beats pocket aces, you know, a handful of times, mm -hmm. um, just automatically, right. Pocket aces will, will lose. Uh, and that's, that's the beauty of poker is that there is a level of luck because that keeps the bad players coming back anyway. And it keeps it fun and exciting is that there's some luck over time. Luck evens out and the best players win, but Mm -hmm. um, in the short term, anyone can win. And so if you go all in with pocket aces and you lose to a worse hand, you should do that a hundred percent of the time. It was the correct play. And if you look back and you say, well, what do you mean? It wasn't the correct, it wasn't the correct play. I lost. That's what's mm -hmm. called being results oriented. And in general, I I've learned it's all about, it's less about the immediate result of what happened because you could have done everything correctly and just luck wasn't on your side. But if your process was correct and you keep following that correct process and you, you learn it and you refine it, yeah. uh, you can just duplicate that elsewhere and eventually luck will be on your side. So that's, an, that's the final concept I would say that poker really taught me uh, that, I like that, that I use in business. Yeah, I like that a lot. That sounds like a lot of really good investment principles to me. Oh, dude, <laughs> totally. Yeah. And, like, and, and having on that note, like having a little bit of, of thick skin to deal with like losses if you're you know, a degenerate like me and like betting on individual stocks. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I mean, now that I just said it out loud, I never even really thought about it as a good uh, condition in game for, for investing because, you know, essentially you, you are making these bets. Um, You're putting your you money know, where your, your beliefs are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah. And I like the, the, the bit about like honing your intuition. Um, I mean, from what little knowledge I have of the game, that makes a whole lot of sense to me, but you, you just wouldn't kind of just think that automatically or assume that. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so like, I mean, you just said something that always gets, that always kind of makes my ears kind of like open up wider mm -hmm. um, about how you love to teach poker. Like, what's is there any business side to that or is it strictly just you know this is just something i love to do and not necessarily want to profit from <laughs> oh no no I, I don't plan to you know I, I don't plan to make money teaching poker there's a lot better poker players than i am uh that are that are poker coaches and and yeah. those, those would be a better value but for a while when i was like 15 i tried out uh just teaching some poker lessons i had a really popular poker blog um 
on this, po- on this poker training site that I was a member of, they let you have mm-hmm. blogs. And so I had like a pretty good following cause I would post like these wild swings and like terrible emotional, uh, tantrums, if you will. <laughs> uh, like I would say a bunch of the time it was pretty even keeled. And then I would have like a really terrible losing session as mm-hmm. inevitable in poker. And with poker, it's important to, if you're on tilt, meaning if you're not playing your a game to, to be self-aware and re- really the best poker players are like super Zen mm. and, and like super aware of how they're feeling at any given moment and playing and they mm. can just think super meta. And so if they're not playing their a game, they'll just like walk away and come back later or brush it mm. off or whatever. Like it, I, I don't have that emotional capability uh, that just emotional resilience yet. I may never. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but so yeah, I, I don't see myself teaching poker, but uh, I did, I, I did teach a few sessions of poker when I was like 13 for like a hundred dollars an hour. No, maybe I was, fi- I was like 15 yeah. uh, teaching like grown ups, And that was, that was pretty fun, but I just enjoy it just because <laughs> I think at this point I can distill down the core principles for like in an hour, maybe even 45 minutes. I could teach you how to beat like any average poker player word okay well just yeah, like next key time, principles yeah yeah next time we get together definitely i definitely need that because i'm into that type of stuff dude, like, dude <laughs> buy, buy me buy me lunch buy me a good lunch in new york and yeah. uh I'll, I'll sit there teach you everything you need to know because really like there's just some best practices in poker such uh-huh. as uh you know raising when you're going to play a pot and playing in position and just understanding what a good hand is and things like that and mm-hmm. they're just like timeless concepts that are just going to work in your favor. And most people, you know, the average person you play against, if, if they're not too experienced, like uh, if they're playing against you, like you're eventually going to win out um, right. pretty significantly too. Wow. Cause when, when I was younger, I mean, I, I think it's hilarious that you just said grown ups. <laughs> <laughs> Cause uh, I've, I've recently discovered that I am a grown up to my son. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still think you're youthful at heart, Roz. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's trippy, man, because uh, there's still like a part of me inside that doesn't know that he's 33. <laughs> <laughs> it's only when I look in the mirror I see like, you know, signs. Or when I see <laughs> other 33-year-olds, I'm like, that looks like a grown-up, but we're the same age. <laughs> right. Well, it's cuz I know you're, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you have like a lot of energy and enthusiasm. But yeah. we all we all know people that are your age or my age. I'm, I'm 29, turn 30 uh, next month, uh, which is weird to say. We all know people our age or even younger that um, you know feel like they they feel so much older and heavier yeah. because because they uh, yeah they're just they're lacking that sort of element of passion or whatever. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 inspired, man, because I think you've um, somewhat articulated that without saying it explicitly that you had kind of like a parallel schooling experience um, that really prepped you for a more entrepreneurial lifestyle, um, you know, through, through, through the enjoyment of poker and what comes with it, um, which is dope to me because I'm, I'm currently homeschooling my son and he's only six right now, but we play a lot of games. Like we play chess and we play, you know, as many different uh, games that I think could help him to think uh, differently and more strategically. So um, with the end goal of him being able to see, uh, you know, college or higher education as not a mandatory step, but optional, depending on what he wants to pursue. So uh, it's good. It's good to hear that from someone like you. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I think that's amazing that you've committed to that. Um, I've lost a lot of faith in the school system. Um, and, and there are more alternatives to public school now, which is exciting. I've seen some cool startups in the space. Yeah. Uh, but just, I, I would say, like, uh, just in terms of being resourceful, like, poker definitely helps you be resourceful and resilient and learn some hustle and take some risk and build towards mastery and mm-hmm. there's no clear playbook. So it's like, yeah, I've never, I, I guess I haven't really thought about it in terms of the way as succinctly as you said it. But, um, I think, you know, when it, get, when it comes to a point in your son's life, when he's old enough, I would definitely teach him poker with the caveat of like, it's very unlikely you want to do this for a living. So don't think of it like that, but think of this as like a really, really fun game yeah. that 
you can just dig so deeply in and it'll uh, build out all these other skills that you can leverage. And also when you're, there's a lot of people in business or whatever, uh, it's like playing golf, mm -hmm. uh, except you don't need like a fancy set of clubs and it for it to be a nice day. Like, I don't know how to play golf, but um, <laughs> being able to relate with people and playing poker uh, yeah. from bonding is also amazing. And if you're like a really strong player, like that just makes you look better, you know? So uh, I, I love that approach. And I think just being able to be resourceful and, and problem solve is, I would say like the ultimate toolkit for being successful in the modern era. Cause we're not, you know, right. factory workers anymore. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, Jared, um, it's been great uh, having you on. I think this is probably my longest episode yet, <laughs> clocking in at 40 minutes. So um, <laughs> uh, if there, do you have any like final final words for our audience? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, thanks so much for having me on. I really had a blast. It went quickly. I always enjoy chatting with you. I'll need to, I'll need to come visit you up uh, in your area to continue this. I would say just final... Um, notes for the listeners is, you know, check out website bytesnight.com if you could use yeah. a simple professional website. Um, or if you're like an agency owner or a marketer and you need like a, just a simple, uh, like white label outsource partner. Um, if you mention this show, I'm happy to give you a hundred dollars off of your first project if we move forward. So a hundred dollars off of eight ninety nine or twelve ninety nine flat, I think is pretty good. And then uh, I also have this uh, directory of other productized agencies if you're looking for other capabilities or resources. If you just go to turnkeyagencies.com, uh, people can check that out. And then, yep. you know, if you want, feel free to go to mypurposecards.com and uh, get on the list to be notified of when our Kickstarter goes live, which should be by the uh, end of March. So, so there's all the, the shameless plugs. Nice, man. Yeah, plug it all in there, man. Because uh, <laughs> It's funny, I was actually... I was I was looking for a, a a Facebook ad agency and I thought oh let me just pull up turnkeyagencies.com. Uh -huh. um, and that's exactly what I did so <laughs> your <laughs> your resource is being used for its purpose. Oh, I um, love it, man. So I love it. Yeah. All right, well Jared, thanks again for uh for coming on, man, and and sharing your your depth of expertise with us. Um yeah, we got to catch up and do this again some other time. Absolutely, man. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, yeah, next time uh, it'll be in the New York area. I'll teach you how to play poker. You'll never go back. It'll be, <laughs> All right, man. It'll be good. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, next time I'll be talking with Sarah Hulier of Centropy Collective. As usual, you can check out the show notes over at sqspthemes.com. Uh, you can join us in the Facebook group. Uh, just search Squarespace Entrepreneurs. And uh, yeah, leave a review or a star or a like or a comment or whatever it is, um, wherever you're listening or streaming this from. All right. Take care. Peace.